Welcome back to Talk of the Town. I am joined now by Dr. Atul Gupta, and we are talking about the American Heart Association and the American Stroke Association's big fundraiser, which is the Southern Coast Heart Ball. You're the chair. Tell us about it. Well, it's been a fantastic experience. You know, this is the Heart disease is the number one killer of Americans across the board. We live in the stroke belt. It's just so pertinent to us here and now. And the mission of the American Heart Association, American Stroke Association, has been so fantastic and it's made such an impact on. And they're one and the same. Absolutely. Yep. And, and not everyone knows that that you know the Heart Association and the Stroke Association are one and the same. Yeah, you're absolutely right, and it is. And this is the premier I and mean, this is the largest fundraising event for the organization. And you all stretch from Beaufort all the way down to Savannah. To Savannah, so yeah. like this is the event. And it's only about a month away. Can you still get tickets? Absolutely. Tickets are, although the ballroom is filling up quickly, tickets are available online at uh, southerncoastheartball.org. And um, you know, it, it's really amazing. For, for $200 per person, you come in, there's a cocktail reception, there's a uh, live auction, there's the silent auction, there's a seated dinner with wine, and there's some surprise entertainment lined up. And then, of course, it even concludes with uh, the band flashback back by popular demand out of Charlotte. Just, uh, it's going to be a great time. And can folks stay the night at the hotel? Yeah, absolutely. The Weston has been kind enough to put together a uh, heavenly heart package, so discounted rates to stay there overnight, a couple different options, some that even include breakfast the next day, so it's going to be well worth it. Yeah. Now, you're a practicing physician, and taking on an event like this that's like their, you know, big event for the year, why did you decide to get involved in this? Well, you know, as a concierge physician, for, for my personal goal and business-wise, I mean, it's my responsibility to provide a premier level of care above and beyond to my private patients. And for those things, I rely on the, the work of the American Heart Association, the American Stroke Association. They provide us with the guidelines, the protocols, so many of those things. And, you know, for me, it's important to give back. And, and on a more personal level, uh, you know, when I was actually asked to chair uh, the event. I was at the bedside uh, in Savannah of a very close friend of mine mm -hmm. and colleague who had actually uh, recently suffered a stroke, uh, Dr. Alan Hare, and uh, I was actually with Dr. Hare at dinner the night he suffered the stroke and oh, rode wow. the ambulance with him. And uh, six weeks later, he unfortunately succumbed to the, uh, the complications post-stroke. And, you know, I think that uh, when you get a call like that and uh, you're right there in the thick of it all. It's no coincidence. Sure. And, you know, that traumatic type of event, it can really spur action for well, people to be knowledgeable, talk about prevention, to learn about the, the signs. Absolutely. The education uh, that, that the mission work of the American Heart Association, American Stroke Association does, it's, it's truly life-changing. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think we all know someone who's either suffered a heart attack. I know my dad had a major heart attack when he was in his early 40s, which was totally uh, unexpected, yeah. right? I know several yeah. people who've had strokes. And what do you think is the most important thing for people to avoid those? Well, I think clearly the, the first and foremost is education. When it comes down to that, whether it's education on the front end, disease prevention, um, you know, whether it's nutrition, wellness, uh, healthy eating habits, then educating the next generation. Then there's the next level of awareness, which is intervention. You know, what things can be done immediately, bystander CPR. I mean, as an example, at a local level, our first responders, EMS, our hospital protocols, they're all uh, reflections of what has been translated from research done by the American, funded by the American yeah. Heart Association, Stroke Association. We have over 6,100 residents, local residents trained last year in CPR through the American Heart Association. Wow. 22 of our local schools participated in the Hoops for Heart or Jump Rope for Heart program. We have numerous volunteers throughout the low country. It's like 600 volunteers that are in place in South Carolina alone just for advocacy to, to help educate. Absolutely. Is there another way to get involved with the ball if you don't attend? Yeah, absolutely. Three main ways to be involved. Um, so first would be a corporate sponsorship, and there are a limited number of those that are still available. With that, um, it's a great way to promote your business, of course, and then yourself and nine of your guests will enjoy the evening at the corporate, you know, at your corporate table. And then the second way would be through silent auction. Uh, we're currently accepting donations 
donations for the silent auction, and that's a great way to be able to give to raise money for a great cause and still get your company or uh, corporation some great recognition at about you know 450 guests that'll be there that night. And then the third way to be involved is through our Open Your Heart campaign, and this will be the second year now of the Healing Hearts Tree and. With a donation of forty dollars or more, you get a, uh, a customized uh, ornament with your name on it, and uh, it's displayed in the lobby of the West. And it's, um, I think, a lot of great ways to be involved. Absolutely wonderful opportunities. The Southern Coast Heart Ball coming up soon. Dr. Gupta, thanks so much for being with us today. My pleasure, Carrie. Thank you. We'll be back with more talk of the town.